now that we've spent quite a bit of time talking about how important technology is, it's also important to remember that there are times when you need to communicate face to face and being able to put into practice the ideas that you've just covered. And one of the great things about being able to have a hybrid class where you have the technology in the background is you need to take full um, take the opportunity, the full opportunity when you do have your students there. I teach communication, GEO, the General Education Oral Communication class. Most of my students are freshmen, first or se second semester, and communication is the sort of thing that they've been doing for years, but maybe you aren't that good at it, maybe they're great at it, and you need to give people an opportunity to fail before they can succeed. You need to make it a safe place for people to try new things. So I have a whole grab bag full of activities and I'm hoping to get you to participate in some of those in the few minutes that we have, just to show you how to be able to implement things. How many of you have heard presentations where someone said, um, all the time? <laughs> okay, you have to keep count? <laughs> all right, well, I have a quick little game that I wanna play and I call it the um game. Here's how it works. I'm going to call volunteers, and if you don't volunteer, I'll just pick you. <laughs> I'm going to call volunteers to come up. I'm not going to give you any time to prepare. By the time you get up here, you're going to start speaking for about 30 seconds. You don't have to speak for very long about whatever random topic I give you. If you say, um, and you will, and it's okay, we're all going to say, um, we all laugh, you sit down, the next person comes up. You ready? Yes. Okay. Any volunteers to go first? Excellent. Your topic is... Hats. I have only two hats in my life. Come on up. Come on up. Your topic is the beach. The beach? The beach. I have not been to the beach in several years. The last time I was at the beach, I had an out of town guest and he wanted to put his feet in the Pacific Ocean for the very first time. So I took him to PB and we had fish tacos. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. I've got all the people in the aisle here. Will you, come on up, come on up. Your topic is backpacks. I haven't done any backpacking. Love to do it, but I don't have the cars and I'm looking forward to have a friend to do that. Keep talking, you've got another 20 seconds. So far, I'd like to have a direction for it and find out what would it take. Is it expensive probably to have? Where would you get the gauge and get the tools and get the map and get the courage? Wow. Mostly courage. Okay, excellent, good job. I'm gonna pick you in the plaid shirt, come on up. Your topic is fish. Fish. <laughs> and if you can talk to the audience. Okay. I've never fished before. I like eating fish. I just uh, bought. Uh, good job! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, come on up. And then I'm almost out of time already. I want to show you a couple other games. I wanted fish because I just went to Tahiti. Go for it. I could have done it fish. in French. Well, let's hear more about the fish. But not in French, please. I just returned from Tahiti, and one of the things that we did was we sat on our balcony and watched all the fish go by. I kept saying la poisson because I was trying to teach my husband to a little bit of French. Um, there were oh, all good job! <laughs> good job. All right, we'll just have one more. Come on up. Talk to us about music. Yeah. 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 music. I decided I wanted to learn to play the guitar, so I went to um, uh -huh. <laughs> It's a fun, short activity, because you can tell someone all day long, you say um too much, but until they recognize where they say it, they're not gonna be able to fix it. And a lot of learning is being able to implement the different things that you're talking about, but you have to be able to fail at it a few times before you succeed. So I just have a couple other games, and I don't know if we actually have time for any of them, but I wanted to show them to you because even though you may not teach a communication class, these sorts of games are nice ways to break up a little bit of the uh, time in your class, to have something fun, and to be able to improve the presentations that you do do in your classes. Sherry, do you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to, while you're talking about that, there's, if people don't know, there's the local Toastmasters here that I'm vice president of education of, and it helps a lot of students in communication or subjects actually do that exactly. 
Excellent. All right, yeah, Toastmasters is a great way to be able to build communication skills. How many of you have your students give a presentation in your class, in a, any class? Okay, a lot of you. Great. All right. Uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that I have is you can get at a lot of bookstores. There are still bookstores and books out there. I still read actual books with paper. I like them better than the you know just flipping through the iPod pad. Uh, chat pack. There are impromptu questions. There is uh, you can also get on Amazon.com. There's a version called Table Topics. And any question, if you could take any job for just one month, what job would you like to have? Assume that you would have the skills and knowledge to perform adequately. Give people a chance to answer these questions. They can do it in small groups so everybody gets a chance to communicate, get to know each other a little bit better, just as an answer, um, astronaut, thank you very much. <laughs> Another thing that you can do is have some fun with voices. Do you all know Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Let's all say it together. Twinkle Twinkle, twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are. We'll just stop there. <laughs> I have a list of different nursery rhymes like that, and I have a whole bunch of cards of how to be able to, the different voices to use. Speak like you're telling a scary story. Does somebody want to do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star like it's a scary story? <laughs> I know you do, Terry. Oh. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> okay, and for the sake of time, I'm going to say great job. We'll just move right along. How about say it like you're really sleepy? Can you do that for us? Twinkle Twinkle Little. Star. Okay, very <laughs> quietly, but absolutely. And you even had some non-verbal, you were kind of do dozing off, so that's great. It's not just your voice that sends a message, it's the way you present it non-verbally as well. So, the next one, speak like you're seducing someone. <laughs> I'm not going to make anybody do that. <laughs> Another thing, if you're trying to get people to tell stories or to be able to interact, commit and communicate there. This is a great game. My students love this one. It's called Story Cubes. And I'm not sure what topics you have. If you teach history or something, there may be a way that you could incorporate this. They have different versions. But look up Story Cubes and what they are. And this is the last thing I'm going to say, and we'll move on to the next person. They're dice that have images on them. So you roll the dice. You can have them use all nine, or just three or four, or whatever's going to be appropriate for the time allotted and have them tell a story based on their interpretation of those images. If you're teaching history, like I said, or anthropology, you might be able to reinforce some of the lessons that have been learned. Pretend you're a Yanomamo and you're, I don't know, <laughs> and, and tell the story. Those are a few of the interactive things that I do in class, and you may have noticed that the energy level with the um game kind of went up a little bit. Games are fun, and people like to have fun when they're learning, especially our new millennials students. So thank you for your time. Thank you.